Let's dig into the Scenario Builder interface itself and see some of the basic features that it has. Almost every file system online is going to need what? Folders. Over here is where you go to create folders so that you can sort your work and your projects. Click the little plus. I'm going to say AI Generations. Click Save. Then maybe I want to AI Automated Blogging. Create a folder for that. Create a folder for AI Automated Print On Demand. And so on. Once you've created your folders, if you already have scenarios here, it's just a click and drag to get them over. So let me grab my all over print hoodie and drag that to my print on demand. Google Photos, add that to AI Generations. Product Watch Social Magic Wand, let's do print on demand. And now I have scenarios sorted into folders. At the top of the screen, Active Scenarios is going to show you scenarios that you have scheduled that are running at regular intervals. Inactive Scenarios, every scenario that you have that is not running on a schedule. And then we have Concepts. I didn't know what this was and I had to look it up and it turns out this seems to be a vestigial placeholder from when Make used to be called Integromat. There used to be a notion of concepts in Integromat, which were inactive scenarios that had never been scheduled. I have never seen anything show under my concepts tab. I think it's just a carryover from a previous version that isn't really actively in use. Right underneath the header menu, we have the sorting options. You can sort your scenarios either alphabetically, ascending or descending, or by date, ascending or descending. Then over here on the right hand side on every scenario, notice we have a little clock icon. If you hover over that, that shows you how often you are set to run your scenario in your scheduler. Next to it, you can toggle a scenario from active to inactive status, which just means it is now either scheduled in your scheduler or it is not. Notice when I select on, my active scenarios is now one, inactive is now three. When I toggle another scenario, it's now two and two. So that determines whether or not your scenario is active. Then we have our copy menu, I call it, where you have the option to move your scenario to a folder. I usually just click and drag, but this is the way to do it the old school way. Select the folder you want to add it. Then we have the clone option, and this is copying a scenario. So let's say you've created one scenario, now you want to create another one that is either a slight variation or is going to make slight tweaks to the scenario you've already built, but you don't want to rebuild the whole thing from scratch. You would want to clone your scenario, possibly give it a different title, otherwise it will be titled previous title, then in parentheses copy. And then we have this little option right here, keep the states of any new modules the same as those being duplicated. Now, this is actually a convenient option and I like it a lot. I usually have it set to yes, um, but I'll explain that in another video because it's it goes kind of beyond this particular lesson about the Scenario Builder interface. Then we'll save. It opens up the new copy. I'm not really going to do anything here and as you can see, We've got scenario one and then we've got the copy that we've just made. When we open a scenario, you'll see we have a completely different header menu. Diagram, history, and incomplete executions. Diagram is really a snapshot of our scenario itself right here. And then down below, we have a process graph that contains about 30 days worth of process history in the form of a line graph. We have two different lines on it data transfer in orange and operations. Data transfer is your bandwidth. So every time we do something like generate an image, push it over to a different system, download something here, yada, 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 all of that counts for data transfer and is measured in kilobytes. Operations can be defined as each time a module completes. So in this scenario, we have eight modules. If I run this scenario, to completion and it completes, it will have executed eight operations. Does that make sense? So there are two different measurements and each one has a defined limit according to your level of make user account. Over on the right hand side of our diagram, you'll notice 
a scroll down, and this is your history. This right here is a condensed version of what we have in our tab. And it's when I say condensed, it's actually the full history. You can scroll all the way down to the very first time you ever ran the scenario. It's just in smaller form. And so our history is going to show us every time the scenario is run, every time it was successful, and also it will show us when it errors and we can click details and get a summary of the error. So this can sometimes clue us in where the process failed so that we know what changes we might need to make. The last item in our header menu is incomplete executions. This can be thought of as your error log. By default though, this is not activated. It's not storing anything in here. If history can be thought of as the entire history of your scenario from start to finish, every time you have run it, every success, every failure, incomplete executions is basically just your list of failures. Now I'm gonna go back to my main diagram. And in the top right hand corner, we have a menu that I rarely use, mainly because almost every option here we have already seen somewhere else. We have the scheduler toggle that allows you to toggle your scenario into active or inactive state. Then we have the edit button, which uh, really just does the same thing as clicking down anywhere on the diagram itself. If I click into it, now I'm editing. Go back, if I click edit, now I'm editing. It does the same thing. Then we've got options where we have scheduling, which is just going to open our scheduler. Then we have rename, clone, and delete. Rename, it's kind of funny, it just highlights the name. You can put your cursor down here at any time and change the name, just so we're clear on that. You don't have to actually select the rename option. Then we have clone and delete. So this top right hand corner menu is really just a bunch of options that we have already seen elsewhere in the scenario builder interface.